But what about 2024? With the last two years, profit and sustainability results netting out to a positive? That means the Hammers could afford to lose a whopping million this year and still be within the allowed threshold. How much money do you make from winning the Europa Conference League? What's the true cost of moving into the London Stadium? And just how much can the Hammers invest in the team following the sale of Declan Rice to Arsenal? Get answers to these and much more as we dive into the financial story of West Ham United. Over the decade, West Ham have been battling in the middle of the Premier League pack whilst departing the bowling ground for the London Stadium. But since COVID, the European tours have taken centre stage, reaching the Europa League semi-finals in 2022 and going all the way a year later, winning the Europa Conference League. On the sidelines, just a handful of managers have sat in the dugout. Allardyce, Bilic, Moyes, Pellegrini, Moyes again. As the Moyes era concludes and Lopetegui's tenure commences, what's been brewing behind the scenes? Revenues took their first jump in 2017 following the stadium move, but like all other teams, suffered COVID disruption. However, the Hammers' European successes have seen the Hammers surpass 200 million in consecutive years. 2023 delivered 237 million. Despite doubling revenues from nine years ago, this was a 6% dip from the year before. This, in part, is due to West Ham having a May year-end, with the Europa Conference League final being played in June. So all income and costs specific to the final will be in the 2024 accounts. So what drove this? Let's dig into the revenue streams. First up, match receipts. 41 million has been delivered in each of the last two seasons, fueled by rising attendances and additional European fixtures. Average league gates have grown steadily at the London Stadium. 2023 seen the average break 60,000 for the first time. Next, broadcasting revenues generating 148 million, but faced a 10% dip. A combination of finishing seven places lower in the league, two fewer TV games, and the reduced value of competing in the Europa Conference League versus the Europa League. Commercial and retail income remained flat at 35 and 13 million respectively, both more than doubling over this decade. By league position, it's clear that European success drives a team to the next level, and on average, West Ham raked in 175 million a year over the decade. I hope there's more to come. Now let's dive into profits. West Ham made consistent profits until 2018. This then flipped to losses during the pandemic, but has since returned to the black. 2023 broke even with 200k in profit. In fact, over the decade, West Ham averaged 1 million a year in profit. So what's caused this and what does it imply for 2024? Let's tackle this with our p and walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue and dive into staff costs. Wages steadily increased in the first half of this decade, but since 2019, the wage bill has remained remarkably consistent. 2023 staff costs amount to 137 million, just 1 million above where they were four years ago. As a proportion of revenues, the irons look in good shape. 2023 stood at just 58% of revenues, 2019 has been the only year of the decade where this passed 70%. How did this translate onto points on the pitch? West Ham's best Premier League campaign saw points cost just 1.4 million each, contrasting with the price yet 3 million plus in recent years due to European commitments. But after staff costs alone, the irons are looking sharp. Next up, operating costs. Over the 10 years, these have two step change increases. First from 2017, as a result of moving into the new stadium, then post-COVID, likely driven by the operational demands of additional European games home and away. However, EBITDA remained positive in all seasons barring COVID impacted 2020. Third, stadium and facilities. These costs include stadium leases and spend on all other long-term assets such as trading facilities. The run rate at the bowling ground veered between one and two million. In July 2016, this site was sold for 40 million, with West Ham recognising a 9 million pound profit. The Hammers entered into a 99 year lease at the London Stadium, with West Ham's current operating leases at 3.5 million per year, without the need for large capital outlay involved in building a new stadium. Since moving in, annual spend across stadium facilities has peaked at just 7 million. 
Finally, we move on to transfer fees. West Ham have ramped up their playing squad investments since 2019. The last three years have seen net annual transfer costs of 50 million. Not one year across this decade has seen net transfer profits, but that could well change in 2024 with the sale of Declan Rice to Arsenal for over 100 million. Despite those significant player outlays, West Ham's success in the last two seasons has been matched with profitability off the pitch. But what about financial fair play? How much do West Ham have to play with this year? Starting with operating profit, we must also include interest to give a full financial loss before tax. Clubs are then allowed to exclude certain costs such as youth and community development. There are also COVID related adjustments such as loss of income. These aren't disclosed, so we are in the realm of estimates. So feel free to robustly challenge these in the comments. As an estimate, we're assuming 10 million a year for allowable costs and all COVID related items net to zero. Add these in and West Ham's PSR losses are just 2.5 million, well within the 105 million max. But what about 2024? With the last two years, profit and sustainability results netting out to a positive, that means the Hammers could afford to lose a whopping 119 million and still be within the allowed threshold. Add in that bumper sale of Declan Rice and PSR shouldn't be an issue. But as Premier League rules shift to a year-by-year -year squad cost ratio in the 25-26 season, West Ham will only have until the end of next season to utilise these profits if they want to double down on squad investment. Will the Hammers pull the trigger? There you go. He said he told you as well. I know he did. <laughs> he can tell me all he wants, I don't give a to be honest with you. Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, tells the same story. West Ham have brought in cash every season. Over the 10 years, the Hammers have brought in 349 million. Now, let's shift our attention back to transfers. Do we see those investments in cash spend? Indeed we do. Transfer cash left the Hammers' pockets every single season. In fact, over the decade, West Ham has spent a net 383 million in transfer cash. Add these together and the transfer fee spend just tips the scales. Across 10 years, a net 33 million has been spent by the Hammers. So how much funding has been required? By 2019, cash had in fact been taken out of the club to pay down debts. But since 2020, West Ham have seen healthy cash injections. Over the decade, a total of 118 million has been funded. Importantly, the majority of that has been equity funding with net debt going from a peak of over 100 million in 2020 to just 20 million by the end of 2023. So will the Hammers invest big this summer to cement a position towards the top end of the table? Only time will tell.